Hello and welcome to Gardening at 15 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my pepper plants, my aubergine plants and my tomato plants. This is really an end of season final update probably. Yeah, it'll be quite a quick one and um, there's not a huge amount to show and it's just getting towards the end of the season now. The plants are still healthy but because I want to make some more space for some more house plants and because I've been cropping well all summer and the light levels are getting lower now I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of the plants. So I'll start off probably with the chili plants. They're looking really good at the moment. They're probably some of the healthiest ones. So we've got the Piri Piri chili here, absolutely covered in peppers. You can see it's also starting to put a new crop of uh, a new flush of flowers on. So there's probably going to be another 10 or 20 peppers in about a month's time. You can see there's already some green ones starting to form there. So these have done really well. These, uh, this plant, it's grown about probably four foot tall, um, maybe th three or four foot tall. So it's, it's got loads of pe peppers on it, loads of chilies. I have been cropping this um, probably about three or four chilies a week. But I haven't been using huge amounts of chilies this summer, just with the cooking I've been doing. So what I'll probably do is I'll, I'm going to harvest all these chilies, put them in the freezer, because I find they freeze really well. And that will keep my chilies going on for the rest of the year. I'm going to do that also with my two Apache plants. They've also crop, been cropping really well, but I haven't really been harvesting them much at all. So they're really heavy with chilies at the moment. I need to harvest them and freeze them before they start to dry on the plants. And that will give me something over the winter months when the, the plants aren't going to be growing or, or cropping at all. So these are the two Apache chilies. They've done really well this year. They probably haven't put on a huge amount of growth since the last update, but they're really heavy with chilies. So you can see this one here, for example, if I tilt it over, you can see for such a small plant, it's absolutely covered in chilies. And as this is the Apache variety, they're going to be really spicy. So I only need one or two in each dish. So that will last me quite a while. This one here is grown a little bit differently. It's a bit more, uh, it's a bit more wilting. You can see it's, um, this one has kept its structure quite well. And it's um, keeping quite upright. Whereas this one seems to be trailing a bit more. But this also, as you can see when I tilt it on its side, is absolutely covered in chilies. It's doing really well, so what I'll do is I'll pick all the chilies off these. They'll put another flush of flowers on. I'll get a last harvest of chilies probably kind of uh, November, December time. Then I'll do the usual winter prune, refreshing of the soil, and they're ready for next year. So these ones, they are, as you can see, still putting on green chilies, still putting on flower buds. But once I take off these old chilies, that'll let have a lot more energy for the putting on new growth I'll put on the new new um, new flowers and then lots of new chilies so it's enough there's probably enough of a season to say to get another crop out of these won't be as heavy as this but this should do quite well the chili plants don't seem to get affected at all by the aphids although these were sitting underneath some of the aubergines and so there's a bit of black uh, mold starting to form in the leaves I'll need to give this a clean I'll probably just rinse under the shower once I've harvested the chilies and that'll get rid of most of the, the black mold from them so I'll go on to the aubergines now, which have had the, the biggest aphid problems. The aphid problems have been sorted now by um, parasitic wasps. So there's not many live aphids anymore. And you might be able to see in the camera there's lots of tiny little flies buzzing around. They're actually the parasitic wasps. They're incredibly small. There's one just here. It's kind of hard to see because they're such small, small, um, small wasps. But what they do is they, um, they lay their eggs inside the aphid the aphid then stays alive but has a, a, a wasp larvae inside it eating its insides it then kind of mummifies and it goes like this white white the, this little white thing here that's a mummified aphid the um the wasp then forms a cocoon inside the aphid and then eventually it bursts out the aphid a bit like a horror film really so there's loads of them around the place that's sorted out most of my aphid problems fortunately but until the uh, population of house city wasps got high enough, we did have a real bad aphid problem. You can see there it's quite thick with um, old aphid bodies and, and um, black mould that appears from the sundew from the, um, the aphids. Now there have been a few hoverflies which have been helping with the aphids as well, but they seem to have died out a bit at the moment. There's not too many of them around. There is a little larva here, and that's that uh, yellow thing there. That's still looking around for a few aphids, but it's really been the parasitic wasps that have done the best. I think because the hoverflies, they lay their eggs near the aphids, but the actual hoverfly larvae can't move around much. Whereas the wasps, they, they, lay, they actually lay their eggs inside the aphids and they explore all around the conservatory and find the uh, individual aphids, lay the eggs individually in them. So they're much more mobile and they seem to track down the aphids a lot better than the hoverfly larvae do. 
So the aubergines have been doing well. You can see they're quite big plants now, and they were stunted for a while, but they've put, they're putting on new lush growth, lots of new flowers as well. But I really want to free up the space a bit more. Also, we're getting a lot of black mold starting to form on the, on the new flooring here. So I need to get the mop, clear this all up, scrub off all the black mold that's formed from the, the aphid residue. I could keep these going if I had grow lamps, but it's now the uh, middle of September and here in Scotland once you get to the autumn equinox the daylight levels are really bad and we're not really going to have much daylight in the next month or two. So although they're growing quite well now and the decent light levels in September, come the middle of September and later the light levels just rapidly drop and they won't wipe it up in time. Also with the aubergines they need high nighttime temperatures. I'm going to soon turn down the heating in the conservatory. At the moment I've been keeping it at a minimum of 20 degrees, which has been doing really well for them, and most of the plants have been loving that. But once the weather starts to get colder in late September, it's gonna be really expensive and it's gonna use a lot of uh, carbon emissions to keep this place heated to a minimum of 20. So I'll probably drop the temperature down to 15 or 10 degrees as a minimum. That way, the heating costs won't be extortionate, and but that would mean that the, these won't do too well. So I'll be getting rid of these aubergine plants. They're nice big plants, um, but they just come to the end of the season for them. And then finally, when it comes to the uh, pepper plants, they've been cropping really well. They they, they were looking quite uh, unhealthy because they were covered in aphids, but these weren't about as badly attacked as the um, as the aubergines. You can see some of the older growth there had aphid damage, but all the new growth is looking really healthy. I'm quite happy with the pepper plants. The uh, the old older fruits still have black mold on them. You can see like this collection in here which I haven't been able to reach as easily. Quite a lot of black mold on there. That will just wash off so that's still edible but it just looks pretty disgusting. But you can see all the new peppers starting to form and up there as well. They're all, quite, they're all clean. They don't have any aphid residue on them so that they'll fatten up and ripen quite nicely. To say the peppers don't need such warm temperatures as the aubergines. So I'm probably going to keep the peppers for another month or two, just get some more peppers on them. Also I can harvest the peppers whilst they're still green, so if they don't fully ripen that's not a problem, I'll still get a pretty good crop. Um, and getting rid of the aubergines will free up a bit more space for the peppers and they should do a little bit better. I might get rid of one or two of the um, really leggy ones, so there's actually four peppers. Some of them like this one here I've had to put on loads of stakes to hold them upright. I've not decided which ones I'm getting rid of. I don't need all of these pepper plants. I might try and keep one or two over winter if I've got the space because I'd like to try and overwinter them as I do with my chilies and see how they do. You can see this one here for example. Lots of healthy new growth on it. So I would like to um, try and keep them a bit long if I can. But I'll pick the ones with the strongest stems which uh, I think is probably that one there, even though that hasn't got the, the freshest growth on it at the moment. I think that doesn't have the fresh growth because it's got so many peppers still on it. So I'll keep the, the stockiest ones. As I say, some of them, such as these ones down here, the, late, the, uh, the stems were just so soft that I had to absolutely cover them with bamboo stakes just to keep them from falling over. So I'll not bother keeping those ones. And finally, I'd like to show you the tomatoes. Tomatoes have been a great success. They did get really hit by um, blight, but as I said in the previous video, I kept cutting off the blighted material and they've actually continued and cropped really well this summer despite the blight. I'll put a link in now in the iCard so you can see that video about the blight. As you can see, they're absolutely covered in, in cherry tomatoes. There's actually more than I can harvest at the moment, so I'm probably going to look at some kind of sauces to make with them or something like that. I've just been using them on pizzas and on bread and sandwiches and things like that. But I'll probably start making sauces with them because I have so many of them. I really need to use them all up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick all the tomatoes uh, this week. I'm then going to get rid of the plants. They're, they're uh, blighted plants, so I need to put them probably in the bin. I don't want them to spread the blight elsewhere. But they've been, as I say, they've done really well. Some of them better than others. This was one of the biggest pots, so I expected this to do the best, but this hasn't done too well. It's just been getting weaker and weaker. Although they're determinate plants or bush tomatoes, they're supposed to stop growing once they fruit, they have been putting out a few new fresh growths. And because of that, I have got some slightly younger tomatoes, and you can see this green one there. One of the problems I have had with these tomatoes is when the crops get very heavy, this is a tumbling tom variety, uh, what happens is the, the, the stems do seem to snap. Luckily, not many have completely snapped. Um, they normally just kind of break and then there's enough of the stem attached to them to keep growing. But it does, does definitely weaken them and it can let disease come in. So these two have done quite well. This one over here has also done particularly well. You can see 
it really is quite heavy with tomatoes absolutely covered there so I'm quite happy with how that's done you can also see there's a little bit of fresh growth starting to appear on them as well but I need to get rid of these harvest them and then I'll create a lot more space so that's about it for the tomato and uh, pepper update what I'm going to do is to say get rid of the aubergines get rid of probably two or three of the peppers get rid of the tomato as well that will free up a lot more space for my house plants I'm going to clear all this out because there's lots of dead leaves a little bit of mold starting to form as well and then the next update for the chili peppers will probably be winter time when I'll be pruning them back and changing their soil getting them ready for the next season I will be growing peppers and aubergines next year but I won't be growing them in this conservatory I'll be doing it in the greenhouse over there the problem is this conservatory is a great growing environment for them but I do struggle a bit because I've got lots of house plants and peppers and aubergines have been taking over quite a lot of space so I want to get rid of the, the vegetables from this area. I might keep the two chili plants, the, the uh, two Apaches down there in here and possibly this, uh, this uh, Piri Piri chili as well, I'm not sure but um, I definitely want to clear a lot of them out of this space just so I've got space for my house plants as at the moment I think about 50% of the space is filled up with vegetable plants. And what I'll do, as I say, is I'll fix this greenhouse. This is, um, I never got time to, uh, to fix this this summer because of the coronavirus. It was difficult to get supplies and I was busy renovating the house. So I never managed to get the, the, um, the greenhouse up and running in time for this season. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that greenhouse this winter, have it up and running ready for next summer. And that'll be where all my vegetable plants go. So I'll probably have some peppers in there and also some, some tomatoes as well. I'm not sure about the aubergines. I'll have to find the good position for them. They really do like quite warm, uh, warm environments, not like a minimum, low minimum temperature. So there's a chance I might take some of them inside into the, into the conservatory. But that's all for this update. I'm going to give you guys an update probably in, in January time when I do the pruning of the chilies.